Hi guys, welcome back to Laura MA TV. Today we bring to you the crazy story of Futanga B. Sissoko, the man who scammed a Dubai Islamic Bank of $242 million and never faced justice. Until his death in March 2021, he never got to spend a day in prison for his crime. All thanks to the mystical powers of his black magic and voodoo. One day in August 1995, a man called Futanga Babani Sissoko walked into the head office of the Dubai Islamic Bank and asked for a loan to buy a car. The manager agreed and Sissoko invited him home for dinner the next day. And this was a prelude to one of the most audacious confidence tricks and brother-like robbery of all time. When the bank manager got to Sissoko's house, Sissoko made a startling claim. He told the bank manager Mohammed Ayub that he had magical powers. With these powers, he could take a sum of money and double it. He invited the bank manager to come over again to his house the following day and to bring along with him some cash. And when the bank manager arrived at Sissoko's house the next day, carrying some money, a man burst out of a room saying a spirit or a jinn had just attacked him. And the man warned the bank manager not to anger the jinn for fear his money would not be doubled. So Ayub left the cash in the magic room and waited outside. He said he saw light and smoke and he also had the voices of spirits. Then there was silence. The money had indeed doubled. Ayub was delighted. He believed it was black magic that indeed Sissoko could double the money and this marked the beginning of his misery. So. He would send money to Mr. Sissoko, which of course was the bank's money, and he expected it to come back in double the amount. Between 1995 and 1998, Ayub made 183 transfers into Sissoko's account around the world. Sissoko was also running up big credit card bills. In 1998, it was rumored that the bank was in trouble. When a newspaper reported that the bank was having cash flow problems, crowds of people gathered outside waiting to withdraw their money. The Dubai authorities downplayed the crisis. They called it a little difficulty that did not lead to any financial losses either in the bank's investments or depositors' accounts. But this wasn't true. The people who owned the bank took a huge hit. It wasn't covered by insurance. The bank was saved because the government stepped in to help, but they gave up a lot of their equity in the bank for that to happen. And where was Futaga Sissoko by this time? He was far gone. He was far away from Dubai. One of the beauties of his scheme was that he did not need to be in Dubai to keep receiving the money. In November 1995, only weeks after putting on the magic display for the bank manager Mohammed Ayub, Sissoko visited another bank in New York and did much more than open an account. He walked into Citibank one day, no appointment, met a teller, and he ended up marrying her. There is a reason to believe she made his relationship with Citibank more comfortable and he ended up opening an account there through which over 100 million dollar was wire transferred into the United States from Dubai Bank. In fact, according to a case brought by the Dubai Islamic Bank against Citibank, more than 151 million dollar was debited by Citibank from Dubai Islamic Bank's correspondent account without proper authorization. But the case was later dropped. Sissoko paid his new wife more than half a million dollars for her help. With the bank's money rolling in, Sissoko could fulfill his dreams of opening an airline for West Africa. He bought a used Hawker Sealy 125 and a pair of old Boeing 727. This was the birth of Air Dabia, named after his village in Mali. But in July 1996, Sissoko made a serious mistake as he tried to buy two hair helicopters dating from the Vietnam War for reasons that remain unclear. Sissoko was quickly extradited to the United States where he started to mobilize influential supporters. The readiness 
of diplomats to vouch for Sisoko shocked the judge presiding over his bail hearing. Tom Spencer was stunned when a former United States Senator, Beach Bear, announced he was joining Sisoko's defense team. The United States government wanted Sisoko held in custody, but he was billed for $20 million, a Florida record at that time. After his bill, he went on a spending spree. His defense team was rewarded with Mercedes or Jaguar cars, but that was just the beginning. Sisoko spent half a million dollars in one jewelry store alone, fine recalls, and hundreds of thousands in others. In one man's clothing store, he spent more than $150,000. He would come in and buy two, three, four cars at the same time, come back another week and buy two, three, four cars at the same time again. To Sisoko, money was like the wind, says the car dealer, Ronnie Dufresne. He said that he sold Sisoko between 30 and 35 cars in total. Sisoko became a Miami celebrity. He already had several wives, but that did not stop him marrying more and housing them in some of the 23 apartments he rented in the city. Sisoko was also giving away large sums to good causes. His trial was approaching and he knew the value of good publicity. In one case witnessed by his cousin, he gave £300,000, that is $413,000, to a high school band that needed money to travel to New York for a Thanksgiving Day parade. Despite this PR drive, when Sisoko's case came to court, he disregarded his lawyer's advice and pleaded guilty. The sentence was 43 days in prison and a $250,000 fine, which was paid, of course, by the Dubai Islamic Bank, though without its knowledge. After serving, after serving half the sentence, Sisoko was given early release in return for a $1 million payment to a homeless shelter. The rest, he was meant to serve under house arrest in Mali. Instead, he returned home to a heroic welcome. It was around this time that the Dubai Islamic Bank's auditors began to notice that something was wrong somewhere. Ayu was getting nervous and Sisoko had stopped answering his calls. Finally, he confessed to a colleague who asked how much was missing. Too ashamed to say, Ayu wrote it on a scrap of paper. 890 million dirhams, the equivalent of 242 million dollars. He was found guilty of fraud and given three years in jail. It's rumored he was also forced to undergo an exorcism to cure him of his belief in black magic. Sisoko never faced justice. In his absence, a Dubai court sentenced him to three years for fraud and practicing magic. Interpol issued an arrest warrant and he remains a wanted man until his death. For 12 years between 2002 and 2014, Sisoko was a member of parliament in Mali, which gave him immunity from prosecution. Until his death in 2021, he was protected by the fact that Mali has no extradition treaty with any other country. The Dubai Islamic Bank, nonetheless, was still pursuing him through the courts, defying Interpol. Sisoko spent the remaining part of his life on the run. He never spent a day in jail. He died in March 2021. He was 79 years old.